This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Hey, all, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Dixville. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Out of the way we go. Welcome to season 16, episode number 3,446. <laughs> Along with Steve the Throw Hill. <laughs> Three tents, <man. laughs> And my car! Montgomery! And you, I'm the Metro! Okay, today, Ryan Castle joins us from his basement studio dungeon bar once again. It is time to sit and spin. We do a slice of Dude, It's the 80s today with the 10 best albums from the 80s of all times. We will play Profile This. Plus headlines, men's room shot of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time at 10. Click clock. <laughs> Get me drunk. All right, here we go. Just another day in Maryland as a truckload of sharks is seen heading up I-95. Okay. Meanwhile, extortionware porn software tells people to pay up or they will see their bare side. Ex-husband arrested after breaking into a woman's home not once, but twice. New Hampshire kids miss school because buses keep getting stuck in mud, and if you're a kid, that's really nice. And Michigan man uses fake name to cops. Turns out that fake name was a wanna guy, too. <laughs> that is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. All up, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, actress Sharon Stone who rose to superstardom for flashing her vagina in the movie Basic Instinct, she's just released a memoir called The Beauty of Living Twice. And if you're like me, you won't be reading it either. But we did glean one interesting nugget. Now, according to her, she got breast implants 20 years ago. No big deal. The interesting part is that she got the implants without her consent. She'd gone into surgery to have tumors removed from her breast, and when she woke up, her boobs were one size bigger. You would think a doctor might ask for permission. See, you would think that, but then people avoid asking permission for a lot of things, even though they know better. A guy in Texas, he's in legal trouble after, well, spreading intimate videos of a woman he knew without her permission. And in case you're an idiot, that's not legal. You know what else is illegal? Remarrying your ex-husband without his consent. And yes, I know how unsound that's uh, how insane that sounds, but it actually happened in France. Out of pure spite, a woman remarried her ex. We'll explain how and why she did it coming up. But again, for certain things, you need permission or consent. We found out on this very program that we needed permission to sit in adult diapers and attempt to defecate in our own pants. Now, we didn't actually get that permission, and that became, we'll just call it, an issue. And also... No one pooped their pants. So basically, we got in trouble for nothing. It's hard. So today, we're talking about those things that 
you or someone you know didn't get permission to do. That's exactly what today's question is. Maybe it's your first R-rated movie, a field trip, taking the parents' car, whatever the case. Today, we want to know who didn't get permission to do that thing they did. Be part of the big show call 206-421-ROCK. Like The Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Over Joel's and away we go. Welcome to season 16, episode number 3446. What a large... And in charge program we have for you Don't today. lie to these people. Guaranteed future repeat. Well, that that's is true. a fact. What a big, big show we have for you today. All right, Castle's going to join us once again from his basement studio dungeon bar. And once again, it's time to sit and spin. And we have uh, a little slice of Dude, It's the 80s. Right right. here uh, Sunday mornings, KISW. But uh, not entirely. We have the 10 best albums from the 80s. Now, keep no, in wait. mind. Is this the 10 best albums of the 80s or like the best album for each year in the 80s. You follow what I'm saying? It is the entire decade. We're going to take that decade and pick the 10 best albums that came out. Now, keep in mind, that's top to bottom on an album. That means the whole Ah, body of work. Yeah, yeah. It's not just like, okay, you had one great song and it went to number one for a while. These are albums that had... Sorry, weren't... Or four different songs on it. And uh, in one case, I want to say there were... Thriller. There were eight songs... Thriller's got to be on that uh, the charted. But keep in mind, uh, this was done from a survey of readers of... Ultimate Guitar Magazine. Ted, oh, oh, no. you oh. stopped that uh, subscription last year, didn't you? Yeah, well, yeah. So you don't, he had you, to pay for his dermatology uh, magazine. You don't know. Do, do you, have you ever picked up Ultimate Guitar Magazine? I have not, man. I picked up bass player. That's as much as I've nerded out. And look, yeah, if you I play know. the instrument, you care. But no, I'm across streams as a guitar player. Okay, now. I don't know. I didn't Those know if you were trying to figure string out. sons of bitches. I didn't know if you wanted to. I'm a four stringer. I wanted to know what's, what Tommy Thayer's up to and what he's playing. I now know what he's up to. He's a kiss. All the I hate that. that I know that. Yeah, exactly. Ultimate guitar. But so there's mostly rock uh, on this list. And believe it or not, some local uh, bands show up as well. Uh, As we'll bring you the top ten, they put out a list of 25. Bleach from Nirvana comes in at number two. Nirvana! From 1989. That's right. Also, Queensryche. Operation Mindcrime. That was actually a very good album. That is the number 19 album from 1988. So, to give you an idea of uh, where that thing is going, in the, in the top Operation ten. Operation Mindcrime! Top ten are definitely top ten worthy. So, that's going to be right. a good list coming up. And not only that, we do uh, 25 from 50 uh, this week with Ryan at uh, Saturday at noon and Sunday at noon. It is 1984. So Are we stealing his thunder? We're stealing all of it. We're stealing okay. dude yeah, okay. We're stealing 25 from 50. The hell with it. We haven't yeah. come up with an original idea since we've been here. Yeah. All right, on to uh, the question. Uh, who didn't get permission to do that thing they did? We start with Sharon Stone. We are all familiar with Sharon Stone. She's got a new book out, a new memoir, uh, and says that she is... Um, She's had a she's had a, an interesting life to say the least. We start with her breast <laughs> augmentation surgery. Okay, are you all right? Sorry. Okay. A comment came in that I cannot read on the air, but they were answering today's question. I see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sharon Stone had her uh, breast augmented without her consent during reconstructive surgery. Stone says she woke uh, from the surgery in 2011 in the operation to reconstruct her breasts. This follows... Uh, I'm talking about benign tumors and breast I'm cancer. Sorry, man. Do you guys want to get through this or not? Because I'm going to switch People are just wrong, Go to man. a lighter thing. You know what I mean? I, this is so a very like, serious Oh, this is story. so funny. She no, but Ted, you read it. Right. Right, I did. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what goes on down at Auburn. I do. <laughs> so she had a breast augmented without her consent. 
Basically, she said she woke from a 2001 operation to her breasts uh, being reconstructed following the removal of benign tumors. Uh, They had increased in size when she woke up. The the doctor basically said, quote, you look better with uh, bigger, better boobs. Damn. When I was unbandaged, I discovered that I had a full cup size, bigger breasts. Ones that he said go better with your hip size. This is according oh, to the new book. Jesus Christ. He had changed my body without my knowledge or consent. The incident is one of a number of upsetting episodes in the book. She is now 63. Not only that, as far as saying you're going to do one thing and do the other, we stay with the same book. We stay with Sharon Stone. She goes into further details on how she was misled into that explicit shot in Basic Instinct. Which launched her career. Which I know. Uh, that she was tricked into removing her underwear. For the famed How? interrogation scene, after being told that it reflected the light, and they assured her vagina would not be seen. Wait a minute. These guys walked up to her, decided she's hot. They know the scene that's coming up. Say, hey, uh, we need you to remove your underwear. We're not being creepy. It's that your underwear reflects the light. Mm-hmm. So, do you know when? Uh, Come on. Do you know when she found out that her vagina was in the movie? Probably when she premiere. saw the movie at the screening. That's absolutely Jesus correct. Christ. Mom, yeah. Dad, I got my first spring break yeah. in Hollywood. Please come to the movie premiere with me. Room full of agents, lawyers, most of whom had nothing to do with the project. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Everyone saw. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, that's, like, you know, at yeah. first, that's the shock, obviously. That, look, it. Yeah. Whether they tricked or not, that absolutely launched your career. Keep on, it wasn't a movie. It mm-hmm. was that scene. That scene was what that movie became about, synonymous, yeah. and she was huge. She also said, yes, there have been many points of view on the topic, but since I'm the one with a vagina in question, let me just say the other points of view are, are BS. It was me and my parts up there. So, Sharon Stone. Basically, she woke up, and by the time the bandages got off, she realized that the doctor had given her uh, bigger breasts. That's crazy. That is that is insane. Especially when your response is, well... It goes better with your hips. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Now, if I woke up from surgery and said, we gave you a bigger penis, I'd be like, I should be upset, but deep down, I'm just not. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. But, but what if I made your testicles bigger? What if they did a penis reduction on you? Oh, I'd be so mad. Like, bro, I want every inch I've got, man. You know but what I mean? that's the thing. He gave her breast implants without asking, and then just said, they match your hips. It would work with your hip, which... I cannot believe that is well, what you said. she was going to get some type of augmentation based on... She was right. getting reconstruction. Reconstruction. Right. So, you know... Like he made them bigger. Right. He just put in the whole thing there. A French woman is facing up to 10 years in jail and a hefty fine of up to 150,000 euros. It's about 170 here. For remarrying her ex-husband without his knowledge in order to prevent him from moving on with his life. Now, they do explain, I, I spent most of this article going, how how do you pull this off? Problematic for the man, the unnamed woman, works as a high-ranking judge in the uh, region of France called Haute de Seine. I'm not even going to try to do that one. No, go ahead. Oh, you mean do like an American? Haute de Seine. Yeah. <laughs> in Lille de France. Well, uh, she reported to... Uh, decided to take uh, revenge on her ex-husband after he had left for another woman. To add insult to injury, the woman had been dumped for the sister of a French minister that she herself had worked as a judicial advisor for. Anyway, her bizarre plan involved remarrying her husband without his knowledge or consent so as to prevent him from moving on with his life alongside his new partner. Now, the plan did go off without a hitch, and her husband remained oblivious to the fact that he had remarried his ex-wife, but not for long. A few weeks after the fake marriage, the judge was once again transferred, where her colleagues quickly found out that she had remarried her ex. Apparently, world travels fast in the justice system, and it was not long before the woman's husband shockingly heard the big news. By the way, after nearly fainting at the news and confirmation that he was once again married to his (laughs) ex-wife... The lawyer notified the authorities. Investigation of the matter was launched. The judge was placed in police custody, along with a man who impersonated her husband. I guess they had to go to a court or whatever. Yeah. And her daughter, who allegedly had a part in the play in the plan as well. Aww. So the judge is uh, now facing charges of forgery and the use of forgery in public or uh, authentic uh, writing. Now, it's not just that kind of legal stuff, too. I mean, that's a bit extreme. It is. We do have a couple of uh, HOA horror stories. Now, these are rules, and, and these these things you need permission to do one mm-hmm. way or another. But just to give you one real quick, which I thought was one of the craziest ones I've ever read. Firefighters in Pasco County, Florida, gave an HOA horror story after a man suffered a heart attack trying to lay sod at his home to avoid a homeowner association fine. Because you're supposed to keep perfect lawn here. Right, right, right. right. 
while he was having his heart attack, literally in and out of consciousness in his front lawn. He kept begging the firefighters to figure out how to lay the sod down. The man's wife wrote on Facebook. As firefighters took the man to a hospital, a brother-in-law then came by to take up the task, planning on staying there by himself until midnight if he had to to get the job finished so they wouldn't get fined. But the firefighters came back, and then they helped him finish the job and make sure that the grass didn't go to waste. We believe in helping the community whenever we can. But they actually stayed late, so the guy would not get fined. I lived in a place for six and a half, seven years, and it was part of an HOA. I did not know it was part of an HOA because I did not buy the place until... I don't know, three months before we moved to Seattle. That's not a joke. I did not know where I bought the place. I'm like, oh, my first place. Like, you're moving. Uh, But as soon as I bought the place, I get this massive, uh, like, loose leaf binder notebook kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's full of the HOA rules. And I'm telling you, you're just mortified. Like, you got to be kidding me, man. I did not know. So, first of all, I didn't read those rules. It meant nothing to me. I didn't care. But uh, I do recall, I only had two instances where the HOA had to show up. And... One time, I had one like the smallest possible Weber camping grill you can buy. Oh yeah, I had one of those, and I'm all excited. So I'm gonna grill up like two burgers, man. You know what I mean? And I had a ground floor apartment, so I am on the ground. It is gas. It's not charcoal. Nothing. I didn't give it another thought, and it's crazy. But I start cooking my burgers, and these two people walk up, and they have a clipboard. I think they're gonna ask me for like a political donation, or do you want to talk about clean water? And the guy says, um. They were very nice, but he said, uh, "Hey, uh, you can't you can't grill burgers out here." So now I kind of realize what's going on. So I remember I looked him right in the eye and said, "I would say I can, just to kind of put it on him." He's like, "Well, you're not supposed to." I said, "Why aren't you supposed to cook burgers?" I don't know. I don't know if it's the potential fire dogs? hazard. It, it was you can't grill, right? That's the whole thing. So whatever, he let me finish my <laughs> burgers this one time, right? And I didn't do it again. It was annoying, but not the end of the world. But at one point, I got some new furniture, right? And the one thing about this little community or complex or whatever, back by the dumpsters, if you ever went back to the dumpsters, there was always people's furniture. And they stacked it as nicely as they could, but constantly, right? People buy a new sofa, they put itself out there, whatever. So I get this new crap. I take my stuff back there. And again, here comes someone with the clipboard. Can't imagine why they follow me around. Uh, shows up at the clipboard and says, hey, you, you can't dump your furniture here. I said, well, this is where they pick up all the crap. And I've seen people do it all the time. I mean, like constantly, you know. And she's like, yeah, but you're not supposed to do it. I'm like, yeah, but obviously you can. And they, they pick it up. It's not like the stuff stays here, man. I've been here for six years. People, You can't do it. Fine. So I called. There's a management company. I'm like, look, man. People have been dumping this crap back there. I need to get it out of my place, mm-hmm. right? Because I have other stuff. Like, it doesn't work. I, I just want to dump it back there. And obviously, whoever picks it up, picks it up. It gets picked up all the time. Can't do it, blah, blah, blah. So I said, what's your address? They gave me their address. It's like four miles away. I loaded all that crap up and went to the dumpster directly in front of their building and dumped all my crap there. <laughs> I was like, well, deal with it then. Yeah. Because it gets dealt with if you do it here. Now you figure it out. I just, it's so stupid to me. All these weird, dumb-ass regulations, man. And you don't know about any of them until you violate one of them. You know, that's the real Because like I said, this this loose-leaf binder, man, it had to be like 400 pages. I'm sure it's not all rules, you know. But I'm like, I'm not reading that. Nobody's reading that. And it turns out the woman who lived directly across the street from me, she was the head of the HOA. So she was so she could see in all every that. goddamn thing I did. I didn't know yes, that for years. Yes. And then the guy that rented my place, mm-hmm. he was actively dealing drugs out of that joint. Well, that's probably not allowed. No, when I moved here, it was great. He was there for years. They kept contacting me, and I said, hey, I'm not making this up. This dude right. was dealing. If you needed drugs, any kind of drug, this guy had them. So people would drive into this complex. By, like, they weren't causing any problems. It's just literally like a, a traffic backup because he dealt pretty heavy. And so this woman's like, well... I'm pretty sure he's dealing drugs. I said, he might be. I don't know. I'm not there. You know, I live in Seattle, man. And, mm-hmm. But the thing is, he sends us rent, granted, cash, overnighted. I know what he's up to. Uh, I went on for about a year and a half. Finally, I'm like, hey, man, you, you got to get out of there. And part of it is because they're going to arrest you soon. Seriously. So he moved oh, yeah. But he was he was a great tenant. Mm-hmm. Ted, one for you real quick before we go to break. A Florida woman, an enthusiast of Disney, uh, decided to plant a whimsical flower bed in the shape of Mickey Mouse in her front lawn. You know, like you have the, uh, the circle thing, but the All right. flowers look like Mickey Mouse, yeah. Uh, the unimpressed HOA told her Mickey didn't fit in with the neighborhood. And to either remove the flower bed or modify it by removing Mickey's ears. So she decided to actually move out, pledging to avoid HOAs in the future. She sold her home and said, the hell with it, I'm leaving. Does anybody have a good story with an HOA? 
No, I mean, you do if you're, I hate to use it, but if you're a Karen, quote unquote, then yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that love that kind of rigid conformity, that this is how everything must be, and I don't care who you are, you can't be any different, you cannot express yourself anyway, any differently. Like, they have good ones, but their good stories are just a bad story for someone else. They finally kicked that Ted Smith out of here. Yeah, right. Someone here says, hey man, someone complained about the smell of barbecue cooking. That's why an HOA has the rule. You've got to be kidding. Because people do that. I don't like the smell of barbecue. I don't like the smell of this. Right? I don't like the smell of a lot of things. Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm going to tell you you can't wear that cologne. I don't like the smell of half my neighbors. Right. I can't tell. I don't like shut the smell your window. Of cooked broccoli. No, it Ted. Like poop. I'm not going to shut my window. I'm part of an HOA. I'm going to smell your barbecue and be angry about it and complain. Who didn't get permission to do that thing they did? 206-421-ROCK. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. An Odyssey station. Yay! You're in the men's room. Yeah, we woke up this morning and realized we're working for Odyssey. Hello. <laughs> Radio.com is now Odyssey. Checked in the email. There it is. Boom. Like your Ted versus the FCC submissions <laughs> in the last minute. <laughs> That's right. Oh. Download the Odyssey <laughs> app and listen to KISW anytime, anywhere. Odyssey is A U D A C Y. That is correct. You can check Thank out our you. podcast. All the things. The Ted Smith's podcast. The Megacast. Podcast. The Megacast. Got a brand new Greatest Story Never Told podcast today about our uh, origins and all the different companies we have worked for back in the day. And yes, yes, yeah. yeah. We are now Odyssey. Uh, so download that app today. A U D A C Y. And you can, uh, honest to God, listen to the show anywhere you want to go. If you're uh, out of town, if you're at home, whatever, listen on your smart speaker. But either way, mm -hmm. there you go. All right, a question today. Who didn't get uh, permission to do that thing they they did 206 421 Rock. Uh, you brought up a story with an HOA. I had an HOA, and Ted even asked, Does anyone have a good story involving the HOA? A few comments came in. You all decide right. for yourself. It says, uh, My parents' old HOA required authorization to paint your house, even if it's the same color that it already is. Mm. My aunt had a terrible HOA that got so stingy they made her change her frosted light bulb on her porch to a specific one that they liked. Our HOA made us get rid of our grills when they were allowed, but the insurance company uh, would not insure them anymore if we still had them. Hmm. This guy, I own a construction company. I had two wheelbar wheelbarrows in my garage. My HOA, actually says my Ola, my HOA said I had to get rid of them because they're not residential equipment. The HOA ended up holding up the sale of our home because they couldn't get the proper paperwork together. I had a neighbor come over with a paint uh, respirator on to tell me I could not have a campfire. Why? Because she could not take her dog for, uh, for a walk due to the smell. I'm not going to say any names, Linda, but she's now running for head of the HOA in our neighborhood. Jesus. I got fined $155 because my truck tires were three inches into the grass. The thing is, I went on vacation. My buddy dropped off the truck. I came back to a $155 fine. My neighbor got fined $100. It's the same guy. Uh, because the flagpole was not attached to the house. I saw a couple of those. You can't have a flagpole in the ground, but you can have one that comes off the side. Off the side of the house. Right. I mean, depending on the on the place. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. There, no, Ted. There are no good it's, HOA right? stories. Not one. Who uh, didn't get permission to do that thing they did? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Anthony. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how's it going? Hola! Long time listener, first time caller. Welcome Thank to you. the program. Appreciate it, man. Uh, so, right to the chase, uh, I run a tree company and I, I tow a 18 foot flatbed trailer with this big old stump grinder on it all the time. And I just recently moved into a 
HOA down in South Hill. And <laughs> <clears throat> you can only have so many vehicles in your driveway. And a bunch of people parked on the curbside. And so I parked on the curbside with my truck and trailer being like 30 something foot long. And uh, took off, went to work the next day, came home to an email and pictures of my truck saying it can't be there anymore. So next time I bring it in, it'll be fine. What is the fine? Uh, it's a couple hundred bucks. So basically, you can't take your work truck home. You have to leave it at uh, wherever your office is and then go drive there. Even if it's closer for you just to be a block away from your next job, you still have to go all the way to the office and get it and come back? Exactly. That Damn. sucks. Well, yeah. I do, look, okay, there was one in here that, as far as rules go, I, and I know this is a West Virginia thing and in some other parts of uh, Washington, and you know who you are. But in Russell, Massachusetts, the Russell Police Department is reminding residents now, because of a new law, that unregistered motor vehicles are not allowed on private or public property. So if you have a vehicle that's not running or not registered right. on your property, each vehicle... Is a hundred dollar fine per week? Really? Per yeah. week? Per week? Wow! See, right. I disagree with that on your own yard. Not that well, I want to look, look at your, but it's your yard. There's a lot no, of no. things in neighbor's yard they don't like. It just look like pink like, flamingos are stupid. I think they are the dumbest thing. Or your fake ass deer. I'm not saying, I know it's not a real goddamn deer. They look like a real deer, but I would not. Yeah, agree. I want to make you pay money to I, have that, the, but that's not okay. The dude I live beside in Maryland, right? Mm-hmm. It, it was he had six. Six cars and two boats in his front yard. Now, it was a small rambler, right? So you couldn't even see the house. I want to say two of the cars had tarps over them. Sure. Uh, That's the way you know they're never going right. to repair. He had two of the same car, like a Wagoneer or something. Like one for parts, one that he... <laughs> one to mean? keep like, the like, dying like, one running. I swear to God. And then he it's had, like an organ donor. Then he had the sports car. Now, he parked that in front of the other cars at an angle. So it almost looked at like the showroom front car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's a good call. Right? They had a Dodge Ram truck and uh, two boats. And I mean, it was just like, it was a lot. It is a lot. It was a lot. It's yeah. unsightly. But again, it's like, man, I mean, it's your it's your yard. It's your yard. See, in theory, right? that's where an HOA could come in. The problem with HOAs, it seems like the people that join the HOAs or the people that want to leave mm-hmm. the HOAs, they're manic. Right? So there's these things yeah. like everyone's grass must be the exact same height and, and all this stuff. And it's like, look, man, in the real world, S just does not work like that. Right. You know, and I know it's an HOA and I know basically you're trying to come up with a like a resentful commune in a way. Mm-hmm. But like you got to let people express themselves a little bit like you're, the curtains in your window. Doesn't matter what color they are inside of your home. Right. But facing out, they must be white. Like, why? Sure. Who cares? Now, what difference does it make? I get know? right. That's. And, and Miles, like you, you have a great point, and I get it, right? You don't want to look at his car, but I'm with thrill. It's like, well, you bought the home, like it's your property. I mean, oh yeah, and look, you I, ag- you I agree with you, honey. I really wish you'd get this S mm-hmm. off your goddamn property. That's all. But since it's your private property, it's nothing it's I, can do just, about it. I never said a word about it. I just like looked at it every day, like, oh my god. You we used to have one of those. Guys. But he's also he was also one of those guys who was like, yeah, man, one day. I'm going to take that thing. I'm like, you're Maybe never, never going to do that. You're not going to do that. No, there's no one day. What is the one day? Because right. I've been here for eight years, and so far yeah. that one day has not happened. He had like a convertible, one of the ones he had a, uh, a tarp, uh, over. tarp over. I can't remember what the hell it was. But it, was a, it wasn't the greatest car in the world, but it was a convertible. Sure. You know, it was like a, uh, like a Sebring or something. Oh, no. no but no, it was no, still no, a convertible. No. It so doesn't matter. I was like, all it, it just needed a little bit of work, but it needed a new top. The whole thing had cracked out. So you got a tarp on top of it. Okay, well, that's not the biggest fix in the world. But in the end, you just end up with a Sebring. It's not a that it gets a Sebring, though. but that's a crappy car. I don't know. Maryland convertibles are fun. You know, there's sun. I've driven in a Sebring but with it's you. But a Sebring. Yeah. What did you say about I the Sebring you- when you were driving the Sebring? My recollection is that you did not like the Sebring at all. Uh, at all, at all. I think it was free. It, it was free. It and was, you still bitch about it. say convertible, right? Must have been really terrible. <laughs> but when you say convertible, people think like sports car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, right, Sebring's yeah. not that, man. I mean, look, they, they tried with the Sebring, but they failed. They just did. Yeah. He's like, well, my Camaro has T's. I'm like, all right, well. Yeah, of yeah. course it does. Yeah, two tops. Right, exactly. Of course it does. Now, when I was a kid, man, I would hit for the cycle on doing things without permission for sure. It depended what it was. The one, the one, the one that I ran the, the most that was just too many layers to it was I had the key to my neighbor's house. They traveled a lot. They had a condo that they would go to a beach or a timeshare and all that stuff. How old are you at the time? I am 16 years old. Okay. All right. I just wrecked my car. I don't have a vehicle. 
So, and at this point in time, I gave you a car. You wrecked the car. I was out later than I should have. So there we go. I, I'm already out past my time. So, right, so I was the parents on, are like tough. So, right. Those are the rules. You know, like I did that. Uh, wrecked the car. Didn't have one. They're not going to buy me a new one. Whatever. So my neighbor, though, he had a Subaru station wagon. Okay. And it was brown. I remember. <laughs> it was four-wheel drive. <laughs> it was like brand new. But it was like a Subaru station wagon. Like, it was all the rage, you know. Well, I had the key to his house. So, you know, I was supposed to just, you know, check on the house. Sure. It wasn't like they had animals or anything. So like, what are you checking out when you have I'm someone just, check the house? They're gone for a couple of weeks, checking on the house. It's, that was kind of part of what I had to do, right? They were gone in the summertime and make sure that the pool filters were clean in the house. It was a nice house, right? All right. But they also had a car, <laughs> and I knew where the keys were, and I didn't have a car. So I might have taken the car a few times. How many weeks were they gone? They were gone all the time. But How I mean, many times a week did you use their car? I mean, <laughs> probably like 10 times a year. It was pretty, I, I mean, it was a lot. But never with permission. All right. right. Correct. Right. But then I would drive about 20 miles and I would pick up my girlfriend. Did you have sex in her car, man? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, but the worst thing was, was that uh, at one point in time, there was a resort, like a uh, a resort where you would go, like for businesses, conferences, weddings, and all. That oh, right, stuff. right, okay. They had an indoor pool. The pool was cloudy as can be. It was just one of those places where you walked in. It's your typical indoor pool. It smells like bleach. Mm. You look down the water. It's cloudy. You wonder how many people peed in it. <laughs> Whatever. So we used to just dive to the bottom, mess around. Well, one day, I came up with a big room key, and it was like the VIP governor's. Uh, oh, room all key. right, all right. Well, this key worked. <laughs> it was a physical key. I was going to say, it's oh, key, right, right, key, right. Yeah. Key, key, right? So I had that bad boy. So then, and then keep in mind, this is before cameras. I knew the sure. side entrances to come in. It was a big hotel. It wasn't like I had to walk through the front lobby. Right, like, right. hi, how you doing? Can I help you? Oh, I knew how to get in. So we would go, and then we would. So you drove the neighbor's car to the pool. Correct. And now you find the, the, the presidential yeah. suite key. is open. Now, the thing about this uh, suite is, is that where it is situated it is on a uh, it's on a cliff bluff overlooking this lake. Okay, this is like the, one of the nicer views on the rooms, right? But I would have to kind of hike around through the woods first, and then look in through the backside to see if any lights were on and if anybody was staying in there, and kind of be on that cliff. Sure. Before we could go in. <laughs> Because you couldn't, you know, it's a hotel room. You don't know if you're right. not going to knock on the door. And somebody has a door like, it says sweet president sweet on the door. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like I don't know who's there. Right, right. So All right. right. Whatever. Governor suite. That's what it was. So I'd go around the back. And then if nobody was there. We go in there. And they had a full bar. And they had oh. a kitchen. And they had a living room. And I'd watch TV. <laughs> and we'd have sex. And then we go home. Did you try to clean up at all? Trying to hide it? No. In my neighbor Bill's car. Well, we made the bed. Okay. Yeah, that's you what I'm asking. Right? Did nobody ever just like notice there was like sound on in there? It was really this this area where this was was close to the pool, but it was you had to know how to get to this room. Okay. It was at the very end of the hallway, the corner of the building. Like there was glass on both sides of, right. of the room. It was a nice room. It's like you know. So I bet you it's the nicest room you've ever but, stayed in. Oh yeah! Oh my god! It was amazing. It was, but we would also keep in mind this was in the summertime. This was like a Tuesday night. Like we never tried on the weekend. Most oh the, sure, of course. Most of the time those those rooms were booked because we tried because we tried to you know throw parties in there, but uh, try to keep it down a little bit. Because how long did you use this? Well, key? the hotel was normally pretty full, so yeah. it's not unusual for people to be walking around and people making noise and everything else. So I mean, I used it for years. Really? Yes. Wow, man. Yes. That even is if we a just deal. ran in real quick, grab some liquor, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> grab booze. We didn't even stay. I mean, you know, like, right. half the time, but it was like with that. Because you're in what high school? Yeah, and then much like with my buddy who, whose car I, I drove over a hill, and I, I take the car and, and I wash it before I came back. So like I didn't get back till like midnight. You know what I mean? Because that's awesome. I went to the car wash. I didn't have permission to use a car. I didn't have permission to stay in a hotel room. <laughs> and you did it all. Always, it always filled gas back up. All the things to try to cover my bases. And I never got caught. I mean... You covered your tracks, though, man, so it's good. Look, I'm a grown-ass man. I got a family to take care of. If I find the key to, like, the presidential suite at any of these local hotels, I'm using it. Mm -hmm. and like I said, 
I'm smart enough to not stay there long, but I'm also dumb enough to do what you did and swipe all the liquor out of there, man. Until they bust me. I mean, I really, I know it's one of those things I would do until I got arrested. Right. They'd be like, son, it was easier to set up surveillance on you because this is like the 15th time you've done it mm-hmm. in four weeks. Like, I know, man. And then all the pictures so up of the guys who stayed, the people who stayed in the You ever uh, put your picture up? No, but it was kind of like, it's kind of like walking into the Met. They had one row of one, one wall was just like the luminaries that had stayed in that room. And, you know, people like with their arm around each other at the restaurant. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Put all those up in the room. God, that's a deal, yeah. man. You know, like I'm looking there and I'm like, Jack Nicholas is sitting on the same couch I am. <laughs> this is great. He probably had sex there, too. <laughs> nah, I doubt it. I don't. Come on, man. The golden bear? You don't think he roared? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I bet he did. It was a terrible stripe couch. Who didn't get permission to do that thing they did? 206 421 Rock. I didn't always have stripes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that is. <laughs> I love that, man. I do. I just. I wish I could find a key. I've never had anything like that, man. I mean, I had buddies that were I had like regular room keys, too. Trust me, that wasn't the only room key down there. People How many those room big, keys those did big, you have? Four or five. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Damn. I, and we would always, and look, sometimes they'd, they'd shut off a wing of the hotel. Yeah. So you couldn't go in there and turn a light on. So you couldn't use that room because then you could see the light through the curtains. So we would make sure that we used the room where they were putting the, the general population. Because the hotel was big enough where it wasn't a full capacity all the That's time. That's thoughtful. So but they would just put people in certain areas. So you just had to make sure you were in that area. Yeah, that does sound like a fantasy. It does. Right. I mean, like, even now. I'm a grown ass man. If I got Look, that, man, I'm, uh, and listen, I apologize to the local hotels, but hell yeah, I would do. Do you have no idea? Like, I mean, when you have a liquor, uh, a bar, and, and you and you're walking down, you know how happy it is to walk down the hallway with a bucket to get ice. Yes, yeah. You're like, yes. this is going to be a great night. Get some snacks. Get some peanut butter crackers. Have you know? ever been in a bad mood getting a bucket of ice at a hotel? No. Yes. Re- what? Just because of the company I was with. Really? Oh. Yeah. You like trying to get ice? Did basically, they not let you away. use the sink as your cooler. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah, it was just one of those things. Like I can specifically remember being like, "I'm gonna go get ice." <laughs> How long were you stuck there with them? Oh, just a day. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah so day. it was fine. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like the funny thing is, like a lot of those presidential suites and everything. Like years ago, yeah, there was a basically was a bachelor party, right. but it was for like friends of my friends, right? And I didn't really, you know what. My friend was invited to this party. He was organizing it. So he was like, hey, this is going to be crazy. You should come with us. We're getting this crazy suite. And I was like, in, right? But then basically when he was booking it, they put him through like the manager. And the manager was like, who is it? Just you and a bunch of dudes? Like, no, no bachelor parties. And they're like, no, 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 it's not a bachelor party. And they're like, we know it's a bachelor party. If you try it, we're going to bust you. No refund. Oh, damn, man. I mean, they were on it. Damn. Yeah. Who did get permission to do that thing they did? 206 421 Rock. It's funny. All right. So here's some things that some of us are guilty of. All right. These are 13 most commonly broken laws. But it's not for, it's more permission. All right. So connecting to unsecured Wi Fi. I'm definitely guilty of that, man. Unsecure? Unsecure. So, oh. like, when I first got my computer, all right, I guess we didn't have something set up with cable or however the hell it all works. So you just scroll through the neighborhood, man, and most people are locked. Oh, but not Johnny number five. Johnny number five. You never jump cable from a neighbor. Uh, like one just yes, out of, like just yes. Out we, did, win, we did it in Baltimore. We did it in Baltimore. I did it in Baltimore. You're, I mean, you're 20 years old. You're poor. I mean, you just like, and then you don't get like the greatest reception. Like the farther you get along in the channels, they start to fuzz out more. But you also don't get the, the bill because you don't have a power splitter. And that's basically that's the bill. All right, here's one. Uh, and believe it or not. Uh, this is, this is true. Singing happy birthday, Christmas songs, or the Macarena in public. Oh, because they're all copyrighted. They're all copyrighted songs. So in theory, you know, if you throw a birthday party and you, I don't know, Chuck E. Cheese or some crap and 18 kids show up, when they sing that, if they really wanted to be essay about things, they could actually sue well, you. That's why them. all the restaurants have their own birthday songs. Yeah, hence we stole Chi Chi's. Yeah, exactly. uh, uh, have you ever just said it's your birthday to get a free drink? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime I go out. It's no, somebody's... but I've sent people uh, birthday things <laughs> for dessert just to embarrass them when it wasn't their birthday because it's funny because no the they sing yes the, the wait staff was coming around to all the tables and I'm like oh yeah 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 when it's about it's his birthday yeah make sure <laughs> I love the because it's so uncomfortable for someone to say happy happy happy, happy. Like, <laughs> you don't want to say something you don't want to say it's, it's already birthday. halfway through <laughs> but then you get a little tiny cake. I mean, look, I remember one place, I forget the name, it was a chain, it was a Mexican restaurant, but like, 
they brought you like nachos and you got to put on a sombrero. <laughs> we were obsessed with this. We just thought it was the coolest. She just went in and said, it's my birthday. Right. Get hooked but up. After a while, like, you, somebody notices you've had three birthdays in a year. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Sir, we're pretty sure we celebrated your birthday four months ago. Right. Now, do you guys want to pay for these drinks? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Oh. Yo, well, yeah, I'll pay for it. I think anymore if I was that guy, man, and I walked in, there was like a mariachi band or something going on. I'd just walk up and hand them 20 and say, see that table over there? Take care of them for like 15 minutes for me, will you? <laughs> Serenade them yeah, exactly. with the most romantic. And when you're done, I'll give you another 20. Keep going. I realize in Mexico, this is important. If you are outdoor dining and you see a mariachi, you cannot make eye contact. You can't. It doesn't matter if it's no, 400 no, no, yards no, no, away. No. I mean, if your eyes even glance at each other for a moment. Oh, he's going to show up with a yeah. guitar. It's like the moment the guy walking down the street realizes you have a cigarette and he owns it. And then you see him like walking sideways. But hey, 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 hey buddy. Like, I knew it. <laughs> Who did information to do that thing they did? 206 421 Rock.